Hello friends. Subscribe our channel. And press bell icon to get the notification of new video. Thank you. Join our WhatsApp group to get daily latest updates. It's totally free. And all the best for this test. The test is in four part, part one, part two, part three, and part four. Now look at part one. You will hear a man buying tickets over the phone. First you have some time to look at questions one to five. Good morning, Municipal Museum of Art, Information Desk. Yes, I'd like to find out about tickets for... Tickets? That's our special events department. Let me transfer you. Special events? Yes, hello. I'm interested in the series you have going on now. Oh, you mean our lecture series on the history of art? Actually, I meant the concert series. Oh, yes, of course. It's already begun, but there's still a concert tomorrow. That's Thursday. There's also one on Saturday, and then the last one is on Sunday. The one tomorrow, is that when they'll be playing the Mozart concerto? Yes, it is. Then I'd like two tickets for that, if they're still available. Yes, we have some tickets left. Now, I'll need your name. It's Stephen Milford. That's M-I-L-F-O-R-D. Since you want tickets for tomorrow, there isn't time to mail in a check. You'll have to pay by credit card. That's not a problem. Then I'll need your credit card number. Oh, of course. It's 16597981648164. Got it. Okay, you wanted two tickets, right? Yes. At 1635 a piece, that comes out to a total of 32 pounds and 70p. You can pick up your tickets at the door. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Fine. Um, could you tell me how to get there? We're coming by train. Certainly. It's very easy. When you get out of the train station, you'll see the library right across the street. Just walk down to the corner. Do I go right or left out of the train station? Oh, sorry. Go right. Walk down to the corner. Right there on the corner you'll see a bank and across the street on the opposite corner is the post office. There are some office buildings across the street too. Anyhow, you just go right at the corner, past the car park and you'll see the museum right there in the middle of the block. If you get to a hotel, you've gone too far. So right at the corner and past the car park but not the hotel. All right, I think I've got it. Great. Make sure you're here by 7.30. That is, you now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. You will hear a recording of a radio show about tourism to Raven Island. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 17. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 17. Good afternoon and welcome to Travel Time. Our guest today is Sheila Farnsworth, Director of Raven Tours Travel Agency. She'll talk to us about travel to Raven Island. Thank you, George. Raven Island is becoming quite a popular tourist destination and with good reason. The prices are still low and there's so much to enjoy there. Most tourists to Raven Island usually spend their time in one of two places. Ravensburg is the major city on the island, though with a population of only 56,000, it's not large by most standards. But for those who enjoy a more urban style vacation, Ravensburg is where they go. For those looking for a bit of peace and quiet, Blackstone Beach is a favorite destination. This town, located on the island's northern coast, has a population of just 12,000 people. The weather on Raven Island is always nice, especially during the summer. Summer in the city of Ravensburg is warm, with average temperatures reaching 26 degrees or higher. And the weather is always pleasantly sunny there during July and August. Summer at Blackstone is a bit cooler with average temperatures of around 23 degrees and the weather is often windy because, of course, it's located on the coast. Ravensburg has a lot to offer visitors. Its clubs and theaters are well known. So if entertainment is what you're looking for, Ravensburg has the advantage there. The disadvantage to this is that particularly during the summer theater festival, the city can become quite crowded with entertainment seekers. Blackstone Beach, on the other hand, is famous for its many fine seafood restaurants, considered to be the best on the island. So if you like seafood, that's the place to go. Unfortunately, eating seafood is the major activity in Blackstone. It's a very quiet town, which is a disadvantage if you're looking for excitement. How can you get there? The Ravensburg Airport is actually located a bit out of town. It's 25 kilometers from the city, but frequent bus service, taxis, and car rentals make it quite easy to get downtown. Travelers to Blackstone Beach also use the Ravensburg Airport, which is about 75 kilometers away. There are three buses a day from the airport to Blackstone, or you can rent a car, of course. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 18 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 18 to 20. Because of the low prices on Raven Island, many tourists travel there with shopping on their minds. What are some of the best bargains available on the island? Well, contrary to what one might think, native handicrafts are not a popular item. 
And although Raven Island has a beautiful musical tradition, there are not many CDs available of the native music, and the ones that are available are quite expensive. Some very good deals can be found, however, in the perfume shops. Raven Island Scents, a local factory, produces several fashionable perfumes, which they sell at reasonable prices. Jewelry is also popular among tourists, and jewelry shops abound. Since fishing is the major island industry, no tourist goes home without a package of smoked fish. If you want to try fishing yourself, however, be sure to bring your own fishing gear. Believe it or not, it's difficult and expensive for tourists to buy it on the island. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. You will hear two students talking about a class project. First, you will have some time to look at questions 21 to 23. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 23. Hi, Janet. Harry, what's up? You know that research project we have to do for Professor Farley's class? Have you started it yet? Started it? I'm almost done. Really? I'm having trouble. Uh, you think you could help me? You're going to need a lot of help. It's due next Thursday. I know. And it counts for 40% of our final semester grade. I know, so I could really use your help. So what topic did you choose? I did my research about people's TV watching habits. You mean which programs they watch? Yeah, and how often they watch. It was really interesting. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 24 to 30. Now listen carefully and answer questions 24 to 30. So how'd you get started? Well, after I decided my topic, I went to the library and did some research. I mean, I read about other studies people had done about TV watching. How did that help you? Oh, it was really important. It gave me lots of ideas about what questions to ask. So after I did the library research, I chose my research method. What did you choose? Well, I could do either interviews or just send around a paper questionnaire. I decided to use the questionnaire because I could get information from a lot more people that way. And then what? I made up the questions for the questionnaire. And who did you give it to? Well, that's what I had to do next. Choose my subjects. You have to think about if you want data from people of a certain age or certain professions and things like that. I decided to ask people like myself, university students. So then you just went around and asked people the questions? Well, first I had to submit my research design to Professor Farley. 
He had to make sure it was okay before I went ahead with the research. Did he make you change anything? No, he pretty much liked it the way it was. So then I had to send out the questionnaire. I just put it in all the students' mailboxes. A lot of them responded. I got a lot of results, pages and pages. Well, what did you do with all that information? Well, I did what Professor Farley told us to do. I made charts and graphs. That helped me figure out what all the data meant. Charts and graphs, huh? Hmm. I'll have to look at my class notes. Yes, you'd better. The professor outlined the whole process for us. So then you'll just hand in those charts and graphs on Thursday. Well, I'll have to write a report too, of course. I mean, the professor wants to see our interpretation of the results. That's the whole point, don't you see? Yeah, I guess. If I get started now, do you think I'll finish on time? Maybe if you don't have anything else to do this week. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. You'll hear a professor giving a lecture on the American crow. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Today I'll talk about the American crow, also known as the common crow. This bird has a bad reputation, and many people consider it to be a pest. But the American crow and many of its cousins in the corvid family are actually among the most intelligent of all the birds. There are about forty species in the crow family, and they can be found in most parts of the world. You'll find crows in North America, although interestingly enough, not in South America. While crows live in cold areas of the far north, close to the Arctic region, there are none in Antarctica. They also like warm regions. There are several species of crows, for example, in Hawaii. And of course, you'll find them in other parts of the world, Europe, Asia, and so on. The American crow is one of the fifteen species of crows found in North America, and is also one of the most common. It's not a small bird, measuring thirty-nine to forty-nine centimeters in length. Unlike some of its cousins, the magpie, for example, which is black and white, or the blue jay, which is blue with white and black markings, the American crow is completely black, including the beak and feet. Because of their intensely dark colour, some people dislike crows, or better said, fear them. Another reason people dislike crows is because they associate these birds with garbage. Crows love garbage and are often seen hanging around dumpsters behind restaurants and grocery stores. In addition to garbage left behind by humans, 
Crows eat seeds, grains, eggs, fish, and carrion. They'll eat just about anything. One of their absolute favorite foods is corn. Crows build large nests of sticks, usually in trees or sometimes in bushes. For safety reasons, they almost never nest on the ground. Mostly, they nest alone, but in some places, they've been seen nesting in colonies. The female lays from three to six eggs at a time. The eggs hatch in about eighteen days. The babies stay in the nest for around a month. Generally, thirty-five days after hatching, they have their feathers and are ready to fly. Next, we'll talk about some studies which have demonstrated the extreme intelligence of these animals. You now have half a minute to check your answers.